Okay, we're gonna continue. So I've been image sourcing. I image sourced from AutoDraw. I image sourced from a directed Google image search. So now's a good time. I'm gonna hit F11, which you can do on your computers in the lab as well to just clear our way to the desktop. And I'm gonna create a new folder. And I'm gonna call this folder exercise one. I'm going to require that you organize your files, but not that you label them exactly the way I labeled them. But I've created a folder for exercise one, line art jumble. And now I'm going to open that folder and drag my stuff into it. So first my screenshots from my desktop. And then go to my downloads folder. Say open in finder. Mine's a lot messier than yours will be at the beginning of a semester. And then all of these as well. So remember I had a screenshot and a download of the, the tree slash mushroom cloud. So I'm going to get rid of the, the screenshot, which is slightly lower resolution on my laptop. And now I have the minimum requirements of five. But what's really interesting about Cat's Cradle, it was banned for being garbage, right? Quote, unquote, in the first lawsuit against it. So maybe I want line art and line art image of garbage or something I find fascinating about the book itself is that this weapon of mass destruction that's created is actually just a new form of ice. It's called ice nine and it's as, as, as innocuous as a little bit of, of an ice cube, right? But if it comes in contact with any other water, it turns all water in contact with it to a solid form that doesn't melt. And so that ends the world pretty quickly if water is no longer liquid. So instead of using Google image search, which I showed in the last video, we're going to use what is recommended in the directions. Because the problem with Google image searches is most of those images, almost all of those images are copyrighted and belong to someone else. And even though we're students, we're just learning, we're not selling this work, it's for educational purpose, we're using it spontaneously, all of that's covered under fair use. I want you to know how to source line art and images that you could use commercially. And so the site for that is pixabay.com. That's my preferred site. There are a bunch of Creative Commons open and public domain search engines, but pixabay is one that is of, of a few different ones. But this is one that I belong to that contributors get vetted and then their work is always curated to ensure that it's high quality and it's always going to be at least a thousand pixels as well. So there's no low res images here. There's no watermarked images here. And the hope is that there's no stolen images here. So they really try to make it and it's free and you don't even need to belong to it. But I will recommend that if you like it and you want to get the highest quality images from it for later assignments, that you do create your own profile. You just need a, a valid email address. So I do have a profile, but I'm going to search for garbage. And under images, I can actually already search. Do I want vector graphics? Do I want photos? Do I want illustrations? And let's try illustrations. Right now you can see that I can categorize it just like in Google image search to black and white. And under category, I could try to find a category that doesn't quite work for garbage. So let's just keep all. And here's a nice line art illustration. But you'll notice there's only 24 free images of garbage can on Pixabay. Whereas if I do it in a Google image search, and I go to you know images, and I limit them to large, because all Pixabay images are at minimum 1,000 pixels, and to line drawing, even with those limitations, I'm going to have just so many, I'm trying to get to the 
where it will tell me the overall number, but way more than 24, right? But so many of them are irrelevant. So many of them are copyrighted. And the Pixabay images will show up in a Google image search eventually, right? But Pixabay makes it a lot easier just to see the high quality and license uh, and not already copyright licensed. So when you go to it, you'll see that it's under a Pixabay license. We're going to learn more about this with question of the day two, difference between copyrighted work and Creative Commons work. We open up the Pixabay license. It means it's free for commercial use, no attribution required. And that is what's called Creative Commons Open. So what is allowed with these images? All content on Pixabay can be used for free and commercial, for free for commercial, which means you can sell it, and non-commercial use ac across print and digital. So for those of you doing social media marketing campaigns, ding, 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 this is imagery you don't have to pay for that you are allowed to use. And attribution is not required, which means you do not need to give credit to the original artist. You always can, it's always appreciated. People let me know a lot of the time when they're using my images, what they're using them for, but they're not required to, right? And you are allowed to make modifications. So you can alter, because that's what we'll be doing. We're gonna be, you can change the image in any way you like. What is not allowed? You are not allowed to redistribute or sell Pixabay content on other stock or wallpaper platforms, which makes sense. You can't say, I got this thing for free from Pixabay. Now I'm going to sell it to you on this other site, right? But what can you do? You can take it from Pixabay. You can modify it, alter it, and then you can sell it on other sites. You just can't use it as it is. You can't sell unaltered copies, exact copies, right? So it's really important to be able to transform and alter work. And that's what we're starting to learn. And you're also not allowed to portray identifiable, identifiable people in a bad light, right? So you will find images of people, not usually celebrities, usually they're like stock models and things. But you might find like public figures like presidents and things on Pixabay. You can use their images because they're public figures and they don't have to sign a release for you to use their figures, their images as public figures. But you can't like then do terrible things to their images that incite violence or incite hate or defame that person, right? So it's just basic public decency laws and libel laws. And then don't use content with identifiable, identifiable persons or brands to create a misleading association with a product or service. So you shouldn't be able to find like a Coke bottle on Pixabay because that's a trademark, that's an identifiable brand that's not free for anyone to use. But if you did find one, they're trying to warn you, don't use it because Coca-Cola can come after you. Not because they created the image, but because it represents them. And they're an entity like a public person <laughs> that doesn't like to have a bad image. Anyway, so that is what a Pixabay license is. The problem with these internet licenses is there's so many different variations and we'll cover that under Creative Commons. But it's a great license for designers to use. And every image on Pixabay, the people that donate them, myself included, have to agree to that license. So we lose our own rights to the image. Well, we don't lose our own rights, but we lose rights to, uh, to sell that image. So under the free download, I get these options. I'm gonna want the largest raster option. And what's great about Pixabay 2 is that it also has vectors, but I don't want you to download the vector yet if you have a vector option. A lot of their line art will be vectors. Instead, just download their, the largest raster option, in this case, a PNG, just like a screen grab. And this one's already cut out, so there's no white background because a checkerboard in, in the digital world means it's empty space. So I'm just gonna download that just to show you what sourcing from Pixabay might be. And then I'm going to search for ice, maybe an ice cube. I want the most innocent looking ice cube ever. 
but I want it to be an illustration or a vector graphic. I want it to be black and white. Let me try vector graphics instead of illustrations. Yeah, they're not the best. But if I just do ice. Yeah, snowflake might be good. So basically, well, this is kind of nice. Basically, we are more limited in Pixabay, but it's higher quality content, right? So it's always a good place to, to search. OK. So those go to my downloads. That's why I like using Chrome. It will show me. Now let me add those to my folder from downloads. The different ice options and the trash can. So now I've got plenty to work with for the next step. So let me review the directions. And now that I've gotten my images and I've put them all in a folder, the directions say that you can use photop.com. This is if you have to do it remotely, right? But we're going to go ahead and use Photoshop, which is what photop is, is copying. So what we're going to do is we're going to load each of these images in as a separate layer. I know some of you are already doing this if you're familiar with Photoshop. So let's simplify this for ourselves. Let's close anything that's not needed. I don't need auto draw anymore. I don't need this anymore. All I need are my images in my folder that's on the desktop that's labeled exercise one line art jumble and the chrome instructions to refer to and then photoshop so you're going to find adobe photoshop i'm going to close other things because when we use photoshop it's it's a hungry program and it's helpful to close programs you don't need. All right, so I am going to add one, one more image type just because this is often what you'll come across. What if you find an image that is not from Pixabay and is a licensable image? So this is one from a place like Shutterstock that has a watermark to it. So this is a really good example. This is a pretty common type of watermark. First, you always want to click on the image and say open image and new tab so you can see it at full size. Because sometimes that full size is not good enough. If it doesn't kind of fill your computer screen, when it does fill your computer screen, if it looks really distorted and, and noisy, that is not a high quality image because this isn't 1,000 pixels. This is only 219 pixels. So again, I want to limit it by size. And I'm hoping to find a line art one that has watermarks. Here we go like this one. So I'm going to say open image and new tab, see the full size image. There it is. It's nice and big, fairly clean. It's amazing to me that that stock sites don't have actually higher quality images since they are selling images. But then I'm going to go ahead and download that. So save image as, download it. So I can show you how to clean that up. But of course, it's better to find images, if you can, that don't have watermarks, which also means they're not licensed already by someone. You don't need to worry about infringing on 
a company or, or an individual's rights.